Hey, E39 Source, Ryan Schultz here with uh, today my 2002 E46 330XI. We've got an issue. Not a fun one. Battery lights on. I'm thinking it's the alternator, so we're going to be doing a alternator replacement DIY today. I just put a new battery in this car. The one that was in there was uh, just 10 years old to the month. I think it was a 700 and 730 CCA. I put in a 790 CCA, just a Duralast Gold from uh, from AutoZone. And uh, the battery was good. We had 12.6 volts, but uh, when the car's idling, no matter what accessories I have on or off, I'm getting about 13.6 to 13.9 volts at the poles, uh, which seems a little low. So today's DIY, as I said, is replacing the alternator. I'd like to give a big thanks to FCP Euro for sponsoring and supporting this video. If you guys didn't know, they offer a completely free lifetime warranty on every single product they sell. I always use the example of oil, but yes, you could buy oil, put it in your car with a filter, run it 10,000 miles, take it out, send it back, get more oil and a filter, and not have to pay for it. Full lifetime warranty on everything they sell, fcpeuro.com. So step one, approach the rear of your vehicle, open the trunk, locate the battery, and disconnect the battery. Whenever we're messing with an alternator, we do not want to have a uh, battery connected. So we're just gonna take that negative pole, it's a 10 millimeter on top, loosen it, take the cable off of the battery, and then place something non-conductive, like this little piece of plastic or some paper or something in there, just to ensure that the negative uh, cable does not reattach to the battery in any capacity. And because why not, go ahead and just disconnect the positive terminal too. Can't be too safe. So we've gotten the battery disconnected. I have it situated like that, so it's not possible that that reattaches itself. Um, don't close your trunk right now, because if you do, the actuator won't work. You won't be able to open it. In the event that you've already done that, you can put your key in here, and a harder than usual turn, I guess anti-clockwise, should uh, manually force the mechanism to unlatch. So I will firstly apologize for a very dirty engine bay. It's unlike me, but this car sits outside. I've been away on vacation for 10 days and it's been terrible weather here as usual in Ohio. So it is getting pretty grungy under here. It'll be detailed soon here in the spring, but this is the way it is. So to get to the alternator, which is located kind of down here below the air box, we need to do a little bit of removal, inclusive of the air box, mass airflow meter, uh, this intake cowl. Now this car is a five-speed manual, so instead of a traditional fan clutch and shroud, it has an electric fan which is a lot easier to remove, in my opinion and experience. If your car's an automatic, you have a traditional fan clutch, which you'll need a BMW fan clutch removal tool to remove. Since I don't have that, you can see the, the nut right there. It's all rusty. There's never been anything threaded onto it. Since I don't have that, I don't have to mess with it. But if you do, um, honestly, I've never removed a fan clutch from an M54. So you'll have to look elsewhere to find that, but really it's quite simple. You just need the tool, it's a very thin, I think it's a 32 or a 36 millimeter open-ended wrench. You put that on there, note that it's reverse threaded. So you're gonna go this way to the right to loosen it instead of uh, the normal way that you would loosen a nut. And then the other tool just has two holes in it and those go over the uh, bolts on the, on the pulley there so you don't move the whole thing. So our first step is gonna be popping out some pop rivets. There's one here, there's one here, and there's one here. All of those are gonna come out really easily with a flat blade screwdriver, or if you've got a uh, expanding pop rivet tool, use that. We're gonna move this out of the way. The air box lid has a whole bunch of clips around the perimeter. You just give them a push or a pull and swing the little metal arm out of the way. We're gonna unplug our mass airflow meter so we don't damage that electrical. We just push down here at spring-loaded and pull back and we'll let you know what's next in a moment. So we got the intake out of there, just those three pop rivets and it pulls straight out and then out towards the front. There's a total of five of these clips, the mass airflow plug that we talked about. And then you can either use a flathead screwdriver or a six millimeter, six point nut driver to uh, release your hose clamp on that. And if you'll just pull that straight back and out, the filter might hang a little bit. There it is. And that lifts out of the way. So good time to clean that out. Good time to check, inspect, replace if necessary your air filter. This one looks great. So we'll move that out of the way and it's a good time to clean that out as well. We do need to remove this. It's two 10 millimeter bolts on the right side. There's also a little hook here that holds this wiring harness onto the box. It's in a little rubber grommet thing. It's gonna pull straight up. It's a little difficult to do. Be careful since all this stuff is brittle, but it's just gonna pull up and off. 
So for removing the electric fan, we're pretty easy here. There's two electrical connections. There's a huge one, tab on the sides, to press the tabs towards the middle, pull straight up. The smaller one goes into this, um, I think it's an air quality control module of some sorts. It's a three pin, uh, typical BMW connector. Squeeze the tab on the top, not one on the bottom, and pull that out. Then over here, there's a T25 Torx that holds the uh, fan into the core support. And then on the driver's side of the car, you would expect a T25 Torx, but no, it is a pop rivet. Uh, not the same one that was out here, but typical pop rivet. So we've done that, and I think it just lifts up and out. And that's part of the reason why I love the electric fan, is that it is so easy to remove and install. Correction, the wires have a little kind of a hand that hold them in there. So with the fan out of the way, we need to uh, firstly remove, since we need to take the belt off of the alternator, which is right here, we need to take the serpentine belt off. And to take the serpentine belt off, we need to take off the air conditioning belt. So the air conditioner belt's right here. The pulley, or the tensioner is, is in between, uh, I guess that would be the compressor over there, mm -hmm. and the main drive. So there's a cap on it that you pop off. I just used a flat blade screwdriver to pop off the cap. Yeah, so the cap comes off, that reveals a T50. We could take a T50 Torx, put it on a breaker bar or a ratchet, insert it into the tensioner, and push down and to the right. That relieves tension from the belt, and we can take the belt off. Now this belt is very simple. It's only connecting two components with one tensioner, so we don't really need to make a diagram of how it goes on there. It's a good time to replace these belts. Unless you've just done it, they're cheap. Do it now while you have it off so it doesn't break. This one wouldn't leave you stranded, but it would leave you with no air conditioning. Uh, so we'll put that off to the side. I'm actually reusing it. I'm not following my own advice. Now we need to do the same thing for the primary belt. This one's a lot more complicated. We're going the alternator, the power steering pump, a whole bunch of accessories down there. So uh, we'll probably want to either find or make a diagram of how installing the new belt will go. Here's what the front end of the M54 belt's gonna look like. I'll take that graphic and overlay it here. Moving on to the serpentine, it uh, is another pulley just like the AC belt. My uh, cap was missing, unfortunately, so it's a little crusty in there. So we used a, a half inch drive breaker bar and then a reducer to 3 8 into our T50. And again, we're gonna go to the right clockwise to uh, release the tension on that. It's, it's pretty stiff. It's probably an original part. So once you release the tension, uh, I just plucked the belt right off the alternator pulley and uh, we'll be able to completely remove this belt. This belt looks pretty dry and pretty crusty, so it's definitely good that I'm replacing this. It's got some cracks in it. What's the angle? Like, there you go. Oh yeah. So I'm actually replacing the idler and the tensioner pulley here uh, today as well, so we're gonna go ahead and do that before we dig into the alternator. Um, the tensioner down there, we're gonna use the same T50. Now, of course, we're doing a loosening motion, which should allow, uh, allow us to take out that T50 bolt and then free the whole uh, tensioner pulley. And then the top one, the idler, looks like uh, maybe a 16 millimeter bolt, which we'll put in there and probably need a breaker bar on. All this stuff's crusty. We'll let you know what size in a moment. The idler comes out with a 16 millimeter bolt right on the front. And uh, you're gonna need a breaker bar on that. Mine was pretty tight. Now don't do what I did and back the bolt out so far that you then are gonna run into the radiator. Don't hit the radiator. You can damage that. It's just aluminum. Those cooling fins are very weak. Um, so get it out, you know, get an inch or two and then move to a, a, take the extension off or use an open-ended wrench or whatever. And uh, you can see the length of that bolt. It's probably uh, over six inches. So we get that off. Now if we look at the back of the idler pulley, there is a bit of a, a nipple here. There's a kind of a, a protrusion that can only be installed one way back in the car. So if you look it's kind of hard to get the light. right here at 10 o'clock or so, there's a notch and the nipple goes in the notch. So it only installs one way. So when the alternator was still in here, um, there's two electrical connections. There's the smaller black one right here. It's the exact same kind of connection that the mass airflow wire was you squeeze the top of it and just wiggle that one off. And then the other one was the red wire there. That's a much beefier um, eyelet connector. And we actually struggled with that one for some reason. So it was a 17 millimeter black nut on the back that holds it on there. So here's the old alternator. 
and here's the uh, 17 millimeter nut that's on the back and then the spade connector from the wire I just showed you was sandwiched in there. So we couldn't really put a socket on that. We used an open-ended wrench, 17 millimeters again in size, and uh, we were able to break it free. Some of the housing came with it. This is very dry plastic. I have no reason to believe this alternator is not original in this car, 2002, 235,000 miles or so. Um, but the problem was the wire, the spade or the eyelet was seized there. And we would turn this and the eyelet was coming with it and it was kind of bending it. So we didn't want to risk damaging that. That would be a pain in the rear to have to cut that out and replace it. So we hit P, we did a PB blaster, let that sit, didn't get anywhere. The key was actually sticking a flat blade screwdriver in there and you can kind of see where it's marred. And uh, we just gave it a couple swift blows with a hammer and that seemed to break the cable free from the nut. So that allowed us to then wiggle the old alternator out. I used a pry bar. Um, it's really sandwiched in there by the two 16 millimeter bolts that were removed. Again, the one 16 millimeter bolt was the one that held on one of the pulleys. And then the other one was just a couple inches away from that. You can see in the bottom left and the bottom right corner are the uh, holes for the 16 millimeter bolts. They're both long, but they're different sizes. Um, so then we just pried it out, pulled it out of here, and let's give this a spin and listen to what the old one sounds like. Yeah, gnarly and it spins freely for quite a while. That is not how an alternator is supposed to sound. So here's the new one. This is a Bosch AL0703N. The one that I took out had an X instead of an N. I have no way of knowing if this is a 90 amp or 120 amp. I guess I could Google that part number and probably find out. But I bought a 120. You can go from a 90 to a 120, no problem, but you don't want to replace a 120 with a 90. So this is the new one. Uh, not rebuilt, it's a new one. This is just the warning telling you to disconnect the battery cables. And you want to have a fully charged battery when you install this. Don't run your battery down on a bomb alternator and then put a new alternator in. It actually says premature failure will occur. Not may occur, will occur. So we've got my battery on a charger getting it back to 12.6 volts or so. So here's the new one. Versus, oh yeah. Instead of going through one by one, I'm just going to give you the part numbers here. The alternator's up top. Each part number has a bit of a uh, description below it. And this uh, is M54 specific. Obviously, I don't think it's specific to the, uh, the three liter block. But those are all the parts you need, including the serpentine belt. That's a Conti Tech belt, the 6PK1538. The alternator's in. It's not too bad to put in, a little easier than taking it out. So you just hold it in place. I did the bottom bolt first. I don't know that it makes a difference. The bottom bolt's the one with the washer. Threads in from the front here. It's just about two or three inches below the top bolt, which is where your uh, idler pulley sits. Uh, so put it in there, Hold the, have somebody else hold the alternator, put the bolt in, get it uh, snug. Don't go crazy tight yet. Then you take the top bolt, Put it through the idler, make sure that the nipple lines up on the notch, it only goes on one way like I showed you a few minutes ago. Put that in there, same thing, snug, not crazy tight. At that point, you can do your um, ventilation duct back there, that hose just snaps on the, the big hole on the alternator. The alternator comes with a plug, kind of a dust cap on that, so make sure you take the cap off and uh, then put your vent on. Then I plugged in this connector here that looks like the MAF connector. We put the eyelet around there and tighten down our 17 millimeter cap nut there pretty tight. I don't have a specific torque spec for that yet, but all of that's tight. So we're gonna move on to installing the uh, tensioner pulley, which is right down here. These are INA pulleys, which I believe are the, um, the original equipment manufacturer for BMW. So we have the pulley. We have dust caps for each one that we're playing with today. We have uh, a washer, and then we have our bolt. And again, all these part numbers you just saw um, in the, on the paperwork. So here we have our tensioner pulley, our T50 bolt, and our washer. So looking at the tensioner pulley like this, this is the hole, the recessed area. The T50 is gonna slide in there like that. And we flip it over to the back. We have our washer, and the recessed part's gonna go like that. Does that make sense? So it kind of looks like a hat when you look at it at that angle. So that just sits in there, ready to put that in and torque down our T50. 
tightening torques. We have 35 pounds for the T50 in the tensioner pulley. The two bolts that hold the alternator in, and note that the one also holds the idler pulley, go down to 47 pounds. So now that we're torqued to spec, our belts are back on, we can go ahead and replace the, um, the dust caps. There's a total of three that we'll be doing on the uh, idler pulley, the tensioner pulley, and the AC tensioner pulley. So replace all your dust caps, so in the event that this has to be done again, the bolts come out pretty easily. Um, the idler pulley here is very difficult to get that cap on. Uh, you really have to push it really hard, and that's difficult to do just based on the fact that you can't hold it in your hand and squeeze it like you could if it were out, but you'll get it, just keep pushing. At this point, we can go ahead and reinstall our fan. The electric fan has that little arm right there that sticks out, that fits down in that slot right there. Other than that, there isn't really anything to it. It just slides down in there, make sure it's flush against the radiator and those black plastic clips. We can take our two wires, put them through the little hand, plug them in, Torx 30, pop rivet, air box, air filter, MAF, band clamp. I will apologize again for the filth, but Success! It's done. We put everything back together. It went together exactly how you would expect it to. And started it up, and about three seconds after uh, we reached a steady idle, the battery light went out. And um, the only lights on now are indicating that the door's open, there's no seatbelt connected, and the parking brake's on. So it was indeed the alternator. So this is done. All right, that does it. We'll do an update on this car soon if you guys are interested. In the meantime, I've driven it about 10 miles, got the uh, rust off the rotors. I've been on a cruise for the last eight or nine days here. So came home, put that in, and it's all good. So big thanks to FCP Euro again, and we'll talk in the next E39 Source video. Take care, guys.